podcast brought to you by best day brewing if you guys like beer and you like the taste of beer uh but you don't want to get drunk this is the beer for you because there's no alcohol in this beer yep but good lord it tastes good and you know what noise it makes when you open it i feel like you make that sound different every time i might but i love cracking open a can i love sitting in the green room with you and drinking a beer even though i don't drink anymore so i can sit there and pretend like we are cracking one open together uh, but Best Day Brewing, guys, if you like the taste of beer and you like the taste of good beer, but you're not a drinker anymore, this is the joint. Oh, you ready? Oh. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. I was driving here in the car. <laughs> Yo, when I was driving here, I kept looking at my rear view. I kept looking at my rear view going, God, I look like shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do look rough sauce. Yeah, I feel rough sauce. I got some glasses in the car. You want to wear them? No, this is supposed to be a, a shot into our life and like vulnerability. So, yeah. You are very vulnerable. Why did you say that like Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> you fucking creep. Did I say it like Hannibal Lecter? I don't know. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hey Man. I'm John. I'm Jacob. Hey, man. Hey, man. You got it. The yelling has to just be like. Dude, the, you honestly, and just before we get into it, and Matt, the producer here, <laughs> just mentioned it too, but you look like a hot bowl of doo-doo stew today. I feel like a cold ball of doo-doo stew today. Not even uh, hot. It is rough. Yeah, rough sauce. I'm feeling rough sauce. Well, we'll get through it, man. And, and what I want to say, first of all, is thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the new people who found us from the Bunny podcast, uh, from us in our interview with Bunny. And thank you to the, not old people, but the oldies uh, who have been here with us, um, who watch the guys, the response to the interview and the podcast have been amazing. Um, the, the so many touching, um, incredible messages from you guys um, and about your personal experiences growing up, um, how Bunny has affected you, or the similarities. Um, between, you, you know, having a step parent and how they treated you, all this stuff, all your very personal stories, the fact that you shared them with us was super cool. I want to thank you so much for all the kind messages and kind words. Um, more to come. We have interviews with Caroline Bryan, um, and we have interviews, uh, an interview with, uh, Karen Fairchild coming up, the, the, one of the people from Little Big Town, lots of good stuff coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This weekend we're in Calgary. Um, it's going to be so, so cold. cold. It's snowing there right now. I know. The weekend after, we're in Appleton, Wisconsin, and then Batavia, Illinois. I know Batavia sounds like a place where they just have Oktoberfest every day. Batavia sounds like the place where Dr. Doom is from. Batavia, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Batavia, anyways, uh, Batavia sounds like a place where you could just sample a lot of cheese. Batavia sounds like that substitute teacher you hate, Mrs. Batavia. Mrs. Batavia. Yeah, oh, Batavia God. is interesting. Anyways, um, check ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates, guys. The comedy is on fucking fire right now. Gramercy Theater in New York this week, and the shows were on fire. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I thought I would start out, if you don't mind, Jacob Wolf. I thought I would start out today, since so many people asked uh, about Bunny and... Yo, you know, I've known Bunny and Jelly now since 2020, probably. Yeah, somewhere around there. Uh, when I was living in Nashville. Yeah, 2021, because you moved at the end of 2020, okay. something like that. Beginning of 2021. Um, and I, I met them in Nashville. Um, and I met Jelly first. And I met him through Brendan Schaub, you know? Right. Um, because, you know, I, I did that show in Nashville where I would have musicians come on stage with me and either try stand up or write funny songs. Right. And, um, Brennan keep kept saying, dude, you got to meet this dude, jelly roll. You got to meet this dude, jelly roll. And I was like, okay, I'm in on the name alone. Yeah. You know, I'm Mr. I, you would like for me to meet Mr. Roll. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. JR, how, whatever you want me to call him. I'm on board. I meet this dude and I'm going to tell you something right away. Um, 
what he reminded me of. I, I was in on Jelly right away because to me, he was a combination or is a combination of two people in my life that not only have had amazing impact on me, but that are remarkable humans for different reasons. And they have remarkable qualities as humans for different reasons. He's like a combination to me of Joey Diaz and Ralphie May. Uh, both of who babysat you. Yep. So that should tell you, and your brother and sister. So yep. that should tell you how much I trusted them with what I care the most about. Absolutely. In my life. And a such a uh, heart on the sleeve. Um, he, let me tell you a story about Joe Diaz. Um, I had never met any anybody like this before, and this is a a, a definitely a, um, a character trait that Jelly had. Also, you know, Joey and I robbed a safe. Whatever, let's get past that. We don't need to tell that story right now. It's a good story. We robbed a safe. I just want to let you guys know they deserved it. This was not something where. We were, we were, they, this, these people owed us a lot of money right. and they were crooks. And I was like, fuck it. I'm taking my money. Yeah. All right. But I remember saying to Joe, Hey, what are we going to do? What do we tell the cops in case something goes down? And he said, don't worry about it. I said, what do you mean? He goes, if the cops come and arrest me, I'm not saying anything about you. And I said, why not? And he said, Josh. He actually called me Josh Wolf because Josh Wolf. Yeah. He always first name, last name. I don't have any, his mom and dad both dead. No real family, at, you know, that he was in touch with at the time. Right. Um, and he was like, I don't have anyone in my life who loves me or who would miss me. You have a family. You going to jail would break your mom's heart. There is no chance in the world that I would ever let them know you were involved. Your life matters. Mine does not. Which is heavy, crazy. Heavy, 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 heavy. But that loyalty, that character trait, that weird moral code yeah. of you're my fucking guy and that's it, I felt from Jelly right away. I was like, this is Joe Diaz. This, this, this dude... You know, much like Joey with this rough exterior and rough past, jail time, criminal shit, probably both have done things that they don't even want to talk about. Right. But also the most caring, loving, ride or die motherfuckers that I've ever met in my life. And I right away, I was like, I'm in with this dude forever, no matter what. Right. Right. These are the kind of people I want in my life. Yeah. So he had talked about his wife and talked about Bunny and oh, oh, by, by the way, pre-meeting her, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to like this person. Why? Because I know that this type of dude isn't going to let some trifling person in their life. He, this type of dude sees through that stuff. He's, his life's been rough enough. He, he sees through it. Right. This person is going to be a high character human. Right. And I remember doing her podcast. I did her podcast a long time before other people were doing it. Right. Honestly, purely on, I, yo, I met Jelly Roll. I know who you are. I don't, I don't need to have met her. It doesn't matter to me how many people listen to your podcast. I know who you are. Right. I'm on board for you too. Right. And then to hear her story. Yo, man, this story of resilience and picking yourself up it is one that attra is so attractive to me. And, Absolutely. And the honesty, I, I, the honesty of her honesty is, is and her total uh, no fear approach to vulnerability because it's her past. Yeah. And her past is her past. And you're not going to define me on what I did, what happened to me, who I was, any of that shit. And so I have no shame in telling you what my past was. And I think that is for everybody super good. One of the reasons that she talked about healing 
is because she has been able to talk about those things that fucked her up openly. And that's the most cathartic. It's one of the reasons that I want you to go to therapy and talk about your biological mom. But I digress. But the fact that she gets to talk about it is very cathartic for her all of the time. And I am drawn to people like that. I am drawn to people who are unapologetically themselves. There are some people <clears throat> that, yo, man, I don't, I don't know how much I like them, but I am drawn to watching videos of theirs. I am because they are unapologetically themselves. Right. And I find that very, very, uh, attractive or not in a, a aroused kind of way, everybody. Right. But I find that very attractive, especially when it's organic and real. There are some people, I won't mention any names, who are, and people are like, this person's super honest. They're very, vo no, that's not. They're giving you the surface. Parents, you know what it's like? It's like when you hear somebody say, yeah, my kid tells you everything, tells me everything. No, they don't. They tell you enough to make you think that they tell you everything. Yeah. Right. They give you kind of like the, instead of a 10 out of 10, they give you like a nice six. Yeah. Um, but I love the fact how vulnerable and open and most importantly, yo, in a time when people are constantly hurting each other and drawing lines and saying, if you don't think like me, fuck you. Or if you're not on in my clan, fuck you. These two who 20 years ago would have never had a platform, dude. Yeah. Look at him. She's an ex sex worker. He's a, an ex drug dealer. Tatted up. They would, he would have never had a platform. Absolutely not. And so I love that these, and that these two people are like the face of love and what a marriage can be. Right. It, they're breaking all the norms simply by being high character people. Yep. And I just want you all to know, man, that, you know, I read all your comments and I want you to know, I read all the comments and then went back and listened to the interview and she's, it was, it was amazing. So I want you all to know more on the way. Um, the new format is going to be solo pod interview pod, solo pod interview pod. All right. And we'll alternate it up. Um, because I really want you all to hear other people's stories about how they grew up, other people's stories about how they raised their kids. Because what I find that does is that when you hear other people's stories of maybe successful people or people that you grew, or you look up to or whatever, when you hear their stories of struggle or what their childhood was like or, and how, where they are now, so many of your comments were like, this healed me. It's so, I was so happy to hear that this, ha I don't feel alone. And that is one of the things, if I'm being honest, that I want to provide. I want people to know that they're not alone. I want people to feel supported. I want people to feel not crazy because they feel this way or think this thing. These are all things that I want. Not only, I still also want to tell dick jokes, guys. And I still think farts are funny. So we're going to have to blend all of that. But man, thank you all so much. What are the, what are, uh, the comments and, and your views and most importantly, your stories and your emotions and your heart. I just want to thank you all so much for joining us on this ride and more, more to come. Can I ask you, Jacob? Wolf, yes. Is there anything that you took away from the interview or took away from her or would like to see us do or any, any overall thoughts at all? Uh, I mean, I, one big thing I took from her and like from both of bunny and jelly, it's very similar. Like it, it's not really, not really. It, it definitely isn't about how you start. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's about, it's about how you finish. It's about, you know, it's, it's part of why I have this, one of these tattoos on me. It's like, you may have made, not made the correct in some people's eyes or in your eyes, the correct or right choice in your past for whatever reason or for whatever situation. But where you are now is because of those choices, bad or good in your past. And they've accepted that and they've accepted it. And they're both extremely happy people. 
because they're happy from where they've come, what they've overcome to where they are now. Like well, you, like you said, 20 years ago, they wouldn't have this platform. They never allowed themselves to be victims. Right. That's it. it was, so, it's and a, it's account, it, accountability and ownership. Well, they, yeah, yeah, exactly. And they left the victimhood yeah. in the past. Yeah. You could, you could have, you can sit on it forever. What happened to you? We've all had terrible things happen to us. It's up to you. Do you want to think about what happened to you when you were 15, still when you're 50? Should that still be holding you back? Or is there a way to grow past it? Acknowledge that this fucking terrible thing happened to me. Yeah. And I'm going to grow past. By the way, that's not to say that, like... I'm not minimizing it. Yeah, yeah, minimizing, I'm minimizing just saying, anyone's trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that you have the opportunity not to be a victim forever. Yeah. And, and so that, that that's all I'm saying. Yeah, and for me, like, just... They are really the definition of... It doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. It's about how many times you get up. And they just yep. kept getting up, kept pushing forward, kept doing their thing. And they've... Good to your people. They reach back. Oh, so generous. Yeah. So fucking generous. Yeah. And so I, I just, you know, I, I feel grateful and, and lucky to have people like that in my life. High character people. Right. Um, anything else you want to add? No, that was really it. Okay. Um, dude, because I also haven't, I, I unfortunately still haven't met Jelly yet. Yeah, he said he didn't want to meet you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Every time he's supposed to come meet us, he has some excuse as to why he can't come. Yeah, and I just assume it's me. he's like, wait, is Jacob there? Yeah, I'm not fucking. Let's <laughs> see how it is, Jelly. Um, listen, man, my 20 year anniversary is next week, dude. Yep. 20 years. Yep. You know what that means, right? We're fucked up. Huh? Huh? What'd you say? I said, we're getting fucked up. No. Dude. No, we're not. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. 20-year anniversary. At first, I, wanna, I went back and looked at the pictures from the wedding. And most people probably don't get to have their kids at the wedding. Right. Or their first wedding, anyways. Yeah. How amazing it was to have you and Caitlin there and in all the pictures and to have Kate be the flower girl and you be the rawr, ring bear. Um, it, it, the, it was absolutely amazing. Your mom. So we have this 20 year party planned next week, right? Yes. Uh, where we're renewing our vows. Yes. How, by the way, my bad. I forgot to ask you to be the best man. Yeah. <laughs> mom brought out that bag and I was like, why does it say best man on it? Okay, he so goes, he you, didn't, you have to brought out the bag. You have to explain what the fuck you're talking about, uh, where we were. That yeah. doesn't make any sense. Uh, so Okay. <laughs> All right, snappy yeah, over there. I'm just saying, brought the bag. Sounds like she handed you a sack of cash or drugs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. You yeah. Didn't, mean, didn't need to get all snappy yeah, on me right okay. there. <laughs> God. So I was dropping him, I was dropping you off from the airport on Sunday. Yeah. And mom usually comes out to say hi while you're grabbing your bags. Indiana yep. Jones comes out, usually jumps in the car and she walks out with a box for Iman, my girlfriend and a little gift bag for me. And it says, Jacob, best man on it. And I was like, best man. She goes, Oh, your dad didn't ask you. I go, was he supposed to? She goes, yeah, he was supposed to ask you this weekend. And I go, never came up in any conversation. And she goes, Joshua Wolf. And I was like, he was like, what? And I go, Am I supposed to be best man? He goes, oh, yeah. You in for that? I was like, I mean, I guess. Yeah. Like, one, I'm never going to say no. But two, what else am I supposed to say? I really did put you on the spot. I Honestly, my plan was I was going to take mushrooms in New York on Friday. You did. I know. And then I was going to ask you mushroom night. You didn't. No, I did not. <laughs> I completely forgot. But whoa, are you ready? Sure. All right. I, that means uh, I have to have a speech now. No, you don't have to have a speech. Uh, okay. You don't have to, you know, your sister's saying one. If I was, if you were doing anything, I would do what Iman said. Yeah. Um, but so 20 years, dude, 20 years, your mom and I, it's pretty, uh, it's a lifetime. Yeah. It, it is a lifetime. And it's the most, you know, I just, I, I, when I look back on our ride together 
And I realized that marriage is so much of this. Yeah. And that when you are at the peak, it's great. You're going to have ebbs and flows. The flow is amazing. And during the ebbs, in everybody has ebbs in their relationship. You know, it's not all Instagram posts. Everybody has ebbs. Everybody has days where they're like, I fucking hate this particular person more than any other human on the earth. And the reason that is, is because you love them so much. People that I don't really care about, it's impossible for them to give me that mad. I don't care enough about you or your opinion. Right. Right. It's the people that I really love. They can get me the maddest. And, uh, like I apparently just did earlier with not explaining the situation. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> mad. It just, you, you just, it's a, a lot of people are listening. And so, it just needs a little description. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to get to it. I was, you were? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I, I'm so excited. I, I don't want to say out loud what the plans are. Although you probably know. Yeah, I know the base of them. Yeah. It's it, my mom and dad are coming in. My dad's the officiant. I did know that. Which is amazing. And uh, so I'm really excited, man. 20 years. How long have you been with your mom? We just celebrated our three-year anniversary uh, last week. Pretty. So think about that, right? I mean, but we've the, been the, together, your mom and I, 23 years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But married for 20. Yeah. Her and I have all, yeah, we've been, we've been together together for three years. So uh, 20 years to me is like, it really is a lifetime. I feel like it's been way longer than three years with Iman though. Like time flies when you're having fun. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it, but you also went through quarantine together where time slowed down. Yeah. That's so true. The, it was, a, that was a probably a long year. Quarantine in Hollywood. Yep. Which was psychotic. Yep. Agreed. Homeless fires. Homeless stabbings. Yeah. Homeless fights. Yeah. A lot of homeless in, in, in situation. Well, I mean, if you saw where I lived, it would make sense. Yeah. By the way, where I did live, you know how obviously like if you were at my corner and at my window, you could see that homeless that came across the street. Hollywood and what? Hollywood and Gower? No, you weren't at Gower. I was... How are you telling me where I live? Gower was uh, two blocks down. Gower? I could what see... What was that street right next to you that you were on? Oh, El Centro. El Centro. Gower wasn't two blocks up. I could see the intersection from my window. Yeah, two blocks away. Are yeah. you out of your mind? El Centro, then another street, and then Gower. Cap. El Centro, then Gower. Okay, well, that's a long block. The only thing on that block was the Fonda. The Jane Fonda. DeFonda? DeFonda. DeFonda. Sounds like somebody I went to school with. DeFonda? <laughs> no, yeah, no. But so now, outside my window on El Centro right there, the homeless encampment is gone. They've put little, like, cement flower pots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That are, like, four feet long all throughout that spot. So there's no more, no more homeless people there. But you know what else I don't get? Sorry, this is a digression and completely ADHD thought. Why the fuck haven't they torn down that closed hemp museum and just built something else? I don't even know what you're talking about. The building that the homeless encampment was up against was the Hollywood Hemp Museum. Hollywood Hemp Museum Swear, is a thing? That's what it said on the side of the building. But it was never open. It was always closed. It was, you know, obviously it was all boarded up. There was like a, like a concert posters on it for the Fonda or like for the Pantages or anything like that. I mean, that building caught on fire four times in the year and a half that I lived there. Yeah. How is it possible that, like, why didn't, no one was just like, yeah, maybe we should just, I mean, let the homeless honestly, burn the building down. I, w maybe the homeless people set it on fire hoping to catch a high from the hemp stuff. You know, they couldn't afford to go to the stores, so they were just lighting the building on fire. No, that's what I'm saying. It was closed. There's no hemp in there. How do you know? Maybe the whole building was built on hemp. Maybe it was one giant hemp building. You can buy, you can build shit out of hemp. Yeah, I know. That's why a, a smear campaign was run against it in the 70s, because hemp could replace timber. Lumber. Sorry. Timber! Lumber! Hemp campaign. Smear campaign? Yeah. Smear well, campaign. Well, I think William Randolph Hearst was the guy who ran a smear campaign. Whoa, dude. 70s. Where did you pull that name out of? William Randolph Hearst? I think that was his name. Do you Definitely is a guy named William Randolph Hearst. Do you know what he did? Ran a smear campaign against hemp. <laughs> 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 I actually do. Yeah, yeah. I think he was a news newspaper dude, 
And his daughter, Patty Hearst, you ever heard of her? She got kidnapped. The daughter of the guy who ran a smear campaign? Yep. <laughs> she got kidnapped. She By who? Okay, by the kidnapper. <laughs> and so she, I forget who, but she was, so Stockholm Syndrome, you know what that is? The Syndrome of Stockholm? So, Sweden, right? so yeah, it's when you start to wear clogs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you, you pretend like you're in the sound of music. It's a weird thing that happens to people. Oh, yeah. Stockholm Syndrome, dude. That's not, oh, yeah, that, <laughs> I'm not sure that's Swedish, but... It's somewhere in that area. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stockholm syndrome, dude, is is when you get kidnapped or held captive and you start to side with your captors. Oh, that's interesting. So Patty Hearst was the heiress to this dude. The Hearst Castle up in Santa Barbara is gorgeous. Oh, wait. I've heard of that. Gorgeous. Amazing. Okay. But she ended up do what was it called? What was the who she kidnapped by? The PLO, right? And so she ended up going on bank robberies and all this shit. When they saw her, they were like, oh, that's fucking Patty Hearst. And she never, I don't think she got convicted of anything because I think she, it was the Stockholm Syndrome. That's like pleading insanity, essentially? It, I don't know how they pled it out, but but um, she never saw any jail time or, yeah, dude, it's a fucking pretty fascinating story. It's really interesting. Yeah, are you, this is completely digressing from what we were talking about. Are you interested in history at all? Eh, I mean, yes and no. Like, I'm not listening to World War II podcasts like you old man, but like I'm not listening to World War II podcasts. You keep saying that. I'm listening to history podcasts. Is there a podcast in there about World War II? I haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> history is a little further back than 1940. Yeah, I mean, but... You know, do you know? I mean, it goes before. Yes, I know. I know it goes before World War II. Okay. Yeah, I'm going older, dude. I, I'm like right now. I'm on Ulysses S. Grant. I like. You sound like you struggled with Ulysses. I did because I was really confused about how many S's I was gonna let go. Dude, he's know. got like 17 S's. Ulysses S. Grant. I don't get it. Why does his middle name have to start with S? Didn't it just? Didn't we complete yeah, Ulysses we? Grant? And. Why do Ulysses S? Can't is it Samuel? Can I just say Ulysses Samuel Grant? Actually, I'm so curious what his middle name is. Okay, let's guess. I'm saying Samuel because I think that's the only S name that was in the jam, in the jam last. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't think there were a lot of there was a Stephen, but I'm gonna go Ulysses Samuel Grant as my number one answer. Survey set. Come on, I'm trying. I'm trying. I mean, U L U L. Hold on, let me spell Ulysses. Oh shit. Ulysses. Fucking fuck. Hold on. Okay, okay. Let me stop. Stop it. Ulysses. U L Ulysses. <laughs> fucking fuck. Ulysses S. Grant. All right, Ulysses. U L U Are you spelling Ulysses right now? I'm trying to. Okay. U L E U L Don't correct me, dude. Oh, I was I'm just trying to spell it. <laughs> U L not E. U L Y Ulysses S E S S U L Y S S E S S Ulysses. No, no, no. U L Y S E E S S Ulysses. Nope. It's just one E. U L Y S E S S Ulysses. Nope. Hit me. U L Y S S E S. Fucking. What is. Ulysses. That's Ulysses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So tell me. Okay. So let me give. Let me give me three guesses on S. Samuel. No. Okay. Is that wrong? Yes. Okay. Samuel. What other S name is there? Uh, Slytherin. <laughs> How great would if he was the original Slytherin? Ulysses Slytherin Grant. <laughs> I would be amazing. So not Slytherin. Okay. Definitely not Slytherin. Okay. I'm just judging by you and Matt's face when you showed him the name that it's not <laughs> anything normal. So I'm going to go Stormgarden. Ulysses Stormgarden Grant. You ready for me to blow your mind? Yeah. Ulysses S. Grant's full name is Hiram Ulysses Grant. It is frequently said that Grant's middle name was Simpson. It was not. His middle name was Ulysses, and he admitted that the S in his name stood for nothing. That is bullshit. <laughs> you know what I think it was? 
I think that P- he had so many S's in his name that people were just like, you're Ulysses Grant. And he just put an S in there because it his, sounded like if he separated them out, people could his say his name. Full name is Hiram, H I R A M, Ulysses Grant. I think what it was is he probably didn't want his first name to be Hiram because people would be like, oh, you're not from this country. Why should we follow you? Yeah. I'm, as a Jew, Hiram sounds super Jewy. Extremely. But so, I don't know that there were a lot of Jews running around when Ulysses Grant was there. Nope. Probably not. But so, yeah, he, had, he admitted that the S in his name stood for nothing. So did he. I mean, he won the war. He did? Which war? World the War II? Civil War? Yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> I know my history. You do? You just said you did it. No, you asked if I was interested. And I said, sure. I know, I know some facts. Yeah? What do you need? You hit me with some historical facts. All right, another Civil War question. I'm going to give you a trivia question. Oh, okay. What did... What did what was the biggest casualty in the Civil War? Like, what was the biggest cause of casualty in the Civil War? Um, people dying. You're stupid. <laughs> what do you mean? What caused the most? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what was the leading? I would, the... I would guess dysentery. Infection, dysentery. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, I would guess. I mean, look, dude. You know, th- the medicine has come so far. Yeah. Things that were going to kill you don't anymore. Yeah. And so, infection. They were cutting legs off. Yo, dude, I thought about this so many times, but the Civil War and, and World War One and shit like that, where you just ran at other people who had guns ah! and, 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 and a knife at the end of their gun, dude. But listen, you're gonna run, at, yeah, like screaming at the, yeah, you're running, and the people are like, are they running at us? That I, I imagine, dude, the first time a whole like battalion had guns, right? And they're across the battlefield. And then they just see one group of people start to run at them. And dude, like they're a little ways away. Yep. So, so I don't, I don't know how long it takes. Let's just, let's, let's just say they're two football fields. Okay. What's a good 200 time? Well, 200 meters and 200 yards are different, but, but like it's like a two football. I don't know. Like, a good 200 time. What's a good 200 meter time? Let's just call it 200 meters. 22 seconds? 23 okay. seconds? Now let's assume that the dudes in the Civil War carrying all their stuff and very European, you know what I'm talking about, sprinting 200 yards, 200 meters, are not doing it in 20 seconds. No. And, and across uneven ground. Yep. So I just can't even imagine that first they're staring at each other. And like, and the dude playing the piccolo, no, he doesn't even have a gun. He's just walking out in front with a fla- next to the dude with the flag. Yeah, I, what what's the deal with that? Like, oh, dude. Here, ah! Wait, so question: Little drummer boy, f- the the flag holder and piccolo guy. What here? What what is the? You just gotta hope everybody's a bad shot. That that's what it is. You're, go- it. you're going into battle that's knowing it. that people yeah. are just gonna that's shoot it. at you with no weapon. Yeah, that's it. You don't have like some sort of immunity. Yeah, that's it. No. It's so I feel crazy. like if you went into that with no gun, you should have. I agree with you. You should have a hey, you can't shoot me. Don't shoot the flutist. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's he's dude. He's not here to fight. He's just making people happy. He's here to play music. Yeah, he's only here because his father forced him to the army. But his true passion was music. I'm saying you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like my guy doesn't want to fight. He's a fucking pacifist. You his true this? passion is music. That's why I'm sitting here fucking like playing a fucking piccolo. Like Hiram. Grant, you get in that room and practice that piccolo right now. Fuck you, Dad. I'm going to go <laughs> kill somebody. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if the dude with the piccolo, like somebody got next to him and they're like, fuck you, piccolo guy. And then he just unsheathed the knife from his piccolo and it was just like, fa, 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 fa. Like dude. the piccolo guy was just a fucking ninja. If we go back even further, pre-gun, you're across the battlefield and now you're just sitting there, right? And you just start, you just have nothing to do until these other people reach you ah, from fucking 200 meters away in all that armor, which you know they have to stop. I mean, if I'm in that armor and I'm running 200 meters, I am gassed by the time I get there. How I'm am gas I fighting? Running, I'm gassed running 200 meters without armor. I'm saying, I'm saying like, so who decides which group runs? Because I feel like you're at a distinct disadvantage when you, because you can't shoot your bow and arrow and you're just running. You can't shoot a bow and arrow while running? 
sprinting in armor across the field? Well, well yeah, okay. Like this? No, yeah. I don't think so, dude. Zero percent chance. But also, it, it, it's it's funny to think about it. Like you say that when during the Civil War, people running at <laughs> one another like that. But like those muskets took forty five minutes to reload. Yeah, and also were one of some of the most inaccurate guns of all time. A hundred percent. I think I would always let the other team team. <laughs> What is this, laser tag? <laughs> like, <laughs> or paintball? Or aerosols? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> I think I would let the other group, group uh, jinx <laughs> shoot first. Because I want to I wanna aim and, and take my time aiming while they're doing this. Fuck me. You by should, the way, this yeah, is like, and while saying fuck me, yeah, dude, should, by the way, you should do that. That is a terrible... It. That's a t- <laughs> <laughs> Don't. fucking... Don't you meme that, you Clip memers it. out there. If you don't meme me doing that. And Although I've done this a couple times. That's I like five podcasts in a row. You've done something with two dicks. It is crazy. It is crazy. It's like you're pull, you're it's like you're drawn to having to do that every <laughs> No, time. I just don't know why. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, that civil war, that seems just it's like brutal. Br- brutal the way they did it. But and I'll tell you something else. You know what history reminds me of? Your childhood? <laughs> no, you <Got> him. <laughs> dick. Do you know what history reminds me of? Is how good we have it today. <laughs> Tell me about it. How I, I think we, we are always forgetting, and somehow we look back, you know, back in the good old days. Okay. But really? I know a lot of people back in the good old days, but you had like no refrigeration or, or before that or after that. Cause pre refrigeration, I feel like times are definitely different. Right. So let's, yeah. So post refrigeration, like, yo dude, if people not that long ago, shit outside in a hole, those Westerns that all, did you ever see Unforgiven? No. Matt, you see, it? Yeah, of course you saw it. <laughs> Maybe one of the best Westerns of all time for me. But some dude gets sh- shot on the shitter because the shitter is 50 yards from the house. And there's a giant hole that he's on a wooden box shitting in, in a, just a wooden box. Yeah. It, and you're box just out- inside of a box. Dude, first of all, this is not your 2024 toilet with the heated seat. Yeah, what happens when it's winter? You're outdoors in Wisconsin in 1800 taking a shit in a box? What? And we're complaining because our Wi-Fi isn't fast enough? What the fuck? It definitely is a, like, what a time it is to be alive. Dude, like, great. It's great. It's great. And it, it, it's time for all of us to start thinking about what we have and not what we don't have. Because what we have is a fuckload of good shit. Although I will say, I, I wish gas was a little lower. Well, what about before cars when you didn't need gas? Then you were just, you would have had to fix the wooden wheel on the wagon. You ready to do that? No. No, dude. I'm not built for that. No, you are not. And guess who else isn't? You. Not at all. You might be the least handy man I've ever met in my entire life. I will take that. I, a lot of people think that like, dude, I'm sure Josh is out building shelves. No. Dude. Zero chance. Zero chance. Look, I'd been- like to be able. I really would. Even if those things came with directions, which by the way, shelves are very easy to put up. Ikea, like you don't want me putting together your Ikea shit. He's going to fuck it up. Yeah, yeah. I, we should do that in competition. I, I agree. It, I, I'll tell you something. And it's, it's less about ability because I don't know. I, I, I built something for your mom maybe two years ago. I think it was a desk. I think I remember that. Yeah. And it's fine. It's less about ability. And more about my ability to concentrate and stay focused. Yep. And I know that one, I'm going to lose focus and I'm going to get halfway through and then there's going to be this halfway built thing. Yep. But two, I don't trust myself with a hammer or a saw. I I saw what my dad did to himself. He shot himself with a, he drilled a hole in his leg with a drill. How? Because we're flighty. 
not concentrating. He he got tired of pressing down. He was pressing down right on the drill. Right. And he was tired. So he, he sat down on a chair and he started to drill like this. And he drilled through the wood. Well, his leg was underneath the wood because he was sitting down. He just drilled a hole in his leg. That he came in, dude. He came into the living room. You know my dad. Savage. And he had a hole in his leg. In his jeans. And he was just drinking a beer. <laughs> and my mom was like, Tom, what happened? And he goes, oh, I drilled a hole in my leg. That was it. That was the end of that conversation. No hospital trip. Jacob Wolf, you know he walked around with a broken kneecap for 20 years. I do know that, yes. 20 fucking years. You know what, what does, and, and then I want to get into a couple of the topics that you, but you know what really does, you know one big difference, and I'd like to marry the two, because I think there is a place to do that. God, I'm so glad that wasn't over. Me too. You know, Matt, Matt would I kick this out? You know the one <laughs> real difference between like his generation and before, there's no complaining. Zero. There's no complaining about, uh, because a lot of them come from depression era people, but there's no complaining. There's no, my mom, gee, there's, yo, there's no, uh, and I heard, by the way, I watched Neil Brennan's special and, and in New York, we didn't even talk about this. We got to see Hassan Minaj. Oh yeah. And, and what a gracious, wonderful human. Oh, good Lord. He is. Wow. But Neil Brennan's comedy special, guys, you know I'm a comedy nerd, is so good, a master fucking class on comedy and joke writing. But he talks about World War II, guys, how they came home and they didn't talk about it. And now, you know, half of social media is just emoting. I'd like to blend the two because I'd like to tell most of the people we don't give a fuck. Your emotional posts every day fall on deaf ears and, and it's, it's like real victimy. Now, and, and every now and then people get to have them and have their moment. Right. But the world war two guys, they came home and never talked about it again. Well, yeah, I, well, I would think also because straight PTSD, they just probably also didn't want to relive anything that they saw or I, did over there. I agree, but it also was not a society where men spoke about their feelings. So I think there's a nice blend now where people come back from the war and they should definitely, I mean, I don't know if the army gets them in therapy. They didn't, didn't with your brother, which was a fucking shame, but it's crazy to me that you serve your country and it's like the most delayed medical healthcare. Yeah. I, anything like, look, Super proud of Trevor and his service. Extremely. And for all those out there as well yeah. who have served, thank you. I just think it's kind of ridiculous. Because look, obviously I support the people in the army. I, I don't support going into other countries and the war and, and any wars and whatever, right? But to, the fact that at 18 years old, you can go sign up to carry an AR-15, which is a... The, a military grade weapon right. and go into a different country and shoot other people who are not, you know, American or on your side, but it, you can't go buy cigarettes. Uh, okay. It, okay. Just, we jumped, we jumped a little bit on. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying okay. like, it, it's crazy that also you, you not only that, but then you go serve your country, you go do all that. You, you see what you see, you do what you have to do. And then you come home and it's like, Hey, I, I have PTSD or, Hey, I, I got medically discharged. I have this, I have this. And it's like, okay, wait two years until yeah. we can get you. I'm a little disappointed in, in the, it, 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 that's understating it, but was incredibly disappointed in the medical treatment and the speed with which they responded to Trevor's ailments, mental and physical Yeah, was real eye opening and real disappointing for me. Yeah. Um, but, but let's, I digress. Let's get past there. But anyways, uh, history. Yay. Maybe we'll talk more history coming up. Uh, hit me Jacob Wolf. There were a couple things you wanted to talk about. Oh, let me just say this before we move forward, dude. I just want to remind you how proud I am of you in this new endeavor that you have jumped into of stand up with both feet. And um, you're real ballsy on stage. 
And I encourage that. It's the best way to learn and to grow is to try shit. And uh, you have no real fear of doing that, which is incredibly impressive, especially just a year in. I, I am trying to find a delicate balance between pushing you and letting you do what you do. Right. Because I think growth comes from a good balance of that. And I'm trying to find it. I just want you to know that if I'm quiet sometimes, it's not because I'm not paying attention. It's not because I don't care. It's not because I'm not rooting. You're just trying to let me find my own path. I'm trying to figure out, trying to find the balance between what I know. This is, there aren't too many things that I could tell somebody if they were going to ask me advice that I'd be like, I'm not the right person for this. Comedy, I'm, I am absolutely a person, not the only person, but a person. I feel very confident with what I would say to people and all that. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm trying to find a balance. So I just want you to know if it feels like that I've pulled back a little bit, that's the only reason why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about that a lot okay. already, and I know that, and I appreciate it. And I know that if I have any questions, I can always come ask. Yeah. But I, I will say, like, in the last week or two, I've really been trying to kind of try a bunch of different shit. Yeah, you know I what I mean? Yep. Tried it last night. Tried some last week. Um, it, it, I'm just trying to find the sweet spot for some of my jokes because I know it's there and I know I'm in the right area and I know it can be the best it can be. I'm just trying to figure out where that sweet spot is. Hey, listen, guys, by the time uh, the Netflix festival comes around, May 9th in LA, those tickets are almost sold out. So if you want to get those tickets now, I'd get them. The other th weekend that's selling out super fast is Austin, May 16th, 17th, 18th. Those tickets are going to go wee. Oh, yeah. Do you remember when you used to walk out of the shower in a towel? And then you would open your towel and go, wee yeah. with just, <laughs> with just dick. <laughs> just dick. Yeah. <laughs> it used to really make Caitlin uncomfortable. Oh, it made me laugh so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like eight and you'd just come out and you'd go, wee <laughs> <That ass. laughs> Yeah. Do you also remember calling me into the bathroom one day and you had your hand, both hands wrapped in toilet paper? And you go to me, do you think these will work? And I was like, are those shittens? Like, <laughs> did you just invent shit mittens? You, you wrapped up your hands like oven mitts and you wiped them on both sides. It was hilarious. I, I might be the smartest man alive. Dude, that was <laughs> low key. One of the most genius ideas I've ever heard. Anyways, um, I just want to touch in with you for a second, just personally. Appreciate it. Um, I'm having the time of my life with you on the road. And thank you for uh, understanding my idiosyncrasies and my, you know, you never, you never let any of my things get in the way of our relationship. You just let me be me and you understand that. It, there are very few people that, that that is the only way to not deal with them, but to be with them. Do you know what I mean? You are one of those people that is just like, you're like me. Our brains are thinking about this, but I guarantee you we're thinking about also in our heads. Well, shit, I have to pack. We're leaving tomorrow. I'm kind of hungry. What are we having for lunch? Or what are we doing for the rest of the day? Or, you know, there's, I'm thinking about 37 different things right now mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. my head. And I know you are too. Mm -hmm. So it you just, you and I are the type of people that you just kind of have to let our brains just, what? Like you just have to let you be you, me be me, and it just all will, you know, it just all rounds off and comes together. Well, actually, you know, it, you, you have come into a situation that's not easy to come into, dude. You're dealing with somebody that's been on the road alone for 15 years. So I have certain things that I like to do at certain times in certain ways. And you have never once said boo about any of that shit. So I appreciate it. Well, also because like the, you like you said, you've been on the road a long time. I'm on year two and I'm fucking tired. Mm. Holy shit. Wah, wah, yeah. Wah. But that's my thing is like, I'm stepping into this world. Yeah. It's, it's something for us, but I'm stepping into your world. Mm. I'm stepping into your career and your brand. So there, I don't really feel like I have, even if I did feel some type of way, I don't have the right to feel that way or express it. Mm. Because this isn't what I started doing. This isn't 
my brand. It is now, but like, it's not, you know, you know what I mean? Between the two of us, it's not my brand. It's not my shit. Mm -hmm. I'm stepping into this because of you. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like I don't have the right to, exp if even if I did feel some type of way, express that feeling because i am put in this position only because of you. So how you do shit is how you do shit and tough shit for me. Okay. Well, okay. I, I appreciate that. I mean, you obviously, if something bothers you, obviously, but, but I've yeah, expressed like, before, yeah, like, yeah. especially like in the merch, in the merch lines, yeah, when I'm you like, <laughs> <laughs> I chewed you the fuck out in Arizona. <laughs> that was December. But since December, you like once, to, once we had that conversation, we haven't had that conversation since. Yeah. Super easy. The conversation that him and I had, I was selling merch because look, I, when we do meet and greets, I sell merch. I take photos. I take photos with you. I take photos solo. I still sit and talk to people. Uh, I'm not saying I'm working harder than you, but I'm doing twice you are, the shit that you're you are. working harder than me. Cause I have to, I'm doing math. I'm giving yeah, change, like, doing a lot of different shit at once. And when I'm cashing someone out or taking a photo with someone, I heard him legitimately three times go, Jacobo, Jacobo, Jacobo. And I was like, Hey, relax. I was like, say it one time. I got you. Okay. I'm just doing thir four different things at once. I have a process in which I do it. I will come find you. I promise you I hear you. Just let me knock some shit out and I will come over to that picture. And you were like, all right, cool. My bad. And that next two shows after that, nothing. Ever since then, it's just been like, yeah, I, I just have a mental groove on how I do shit, especially at that merch table. And you know, people are always like, yeah, like the club's like, oh, we can sell the merch for you. And I'm like, I promise you, like I need to be selling the merch. Yep. But, but yeah. So okay. I, yeah, you know, if I want to speak up, I want to fucking speak up. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, listen. Um, hit me with. I know that you had some articles. Okay. I know you're not a big watching people eat guy. Um, but I we I just have to the first the first three seconds of this video, truthfully, is just astounding. Even for me, I like I don't know why. Like I don't purposely go online to watch people eat but there are sometimes where like you know i see people eat and i'm like oh that looks really good and it'll influence me to go you know get food or get a certain type of food this video didn't really influence me to do anything except question life really dude i can't wait for you to watch the f I, I, dude i watched Three seconds. Is this mukbang? Yes. Oh, fucking shit. I watched three seconds of this video and I immediately sent it. I right. was like, I, I haven't watched past the first five seconds. Guys, I, if you know me at all, you know that I hate hearing the sound of people eating and drinking. Sorry, I tried to be far away from I that one. I hate. It drives me crazy. I feel like ripping my ears out and jumping out the window. I'm looking, excuse me, I'm looking at the, the, whatever, the first picture, first frame. Cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cover for those of you listening. And it looks like he's holding a, why do they always wear plastic gloves? So your hands look okay, messy. I don't know. That, I, I, can I tell you low key, one of the things that bothers me the most about these videos. Yeah. You said that before. The why? But why also, the fuck are you wearing? doctor's gloves to eat your food. Now you're worried about being gross, you fucks? Well, I don't think they're worried about being gross. I think it's just like... They don't have napkins? Or oh, no, a fucking they, towel? They do. A wet nap? But I feel like with how much they eat, it's just easier to do it with gloves. Yeah, dude. I, it's the thing that might bother me the most. I will say, fucking the, gloves. The, the black gloves, I'm like, sure. White gloves? That dude's wearing white gloves. Dude, these are the gloves you use to stick your finger up somebody's ass as a doctor. Yeah. Why are you eating with them? Yeah, I don't get it. All right, so we, look, this, this video is a minute and 20 seconds. We, oh. I only watched the first five seconds because that's what I want to talk about. So legit, I just want you to watch him eat the first thing and then we can stop. I just, because it's something I think we have to talk about. Okay. Hit me, Matt. So first of all, he crushes this water bottle. In a second and a half. No, that was fast motion, dude. Now watch this. Pause it. <laughs> Ma Matt, did you see him eat that whole chicken wing by itself? Like it was a pop piece of popcorn? 
I will say that that the first part of this is very cartoon. I feel like I'm watching uh, somebody eat in a Bugs Bunny cartoon. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Where they would take the ham and go, Arp. that's what I feel like I'm watching an that's old. That's what I'm saying. But like, this was fast motion. Am I right? This is fast motion. Matt, that feels like two times. I don't think so, dude. Go back to the beginning. Can we go back to the beginning? Are you, are you telling me that this is not fast motion? Go ahead. Fast motion, 100%. Yeah, it might be one and a half times. That's one. But let's what? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you can pause it. You can pause it. <laughs> oh, my fuck. <laughs> Actually? That was <laughs> revolting. I don't understand uh, how you can eat something like that. Why aren't they all Asian? <laughs> That's kind of their thing. Why, what is? Why, first of all, why are they all Asian? Why Why is that happening? Well, because mukbang is a Korean. No, I get by the, yeah. But, that, but that's what I'm saying. It's like mukbang being a Korean word. It's part of, I would assume, mostly Asian culture. Like, dude, what's been popping up on my TikTok a lot recently are these professional eaters, but they're these 105 pound Asian women no. who go in and they order like 15 servings of something and just sit there and fucking pound it and just eat probably $200 worth of food by themselves that every time, every time this girl orders it, the people in the kitchen come out and they're like, you sure? Like, how are you going to eat all that? And she just busts down all this food. It is the craziest thing. But yeah, that, I just wanted to show you the first four seconds. That, him eating that chicken wing is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Dude, there is so much gross happening right there. <laughs> so much gross. And I like, wait, did he, he did, dude. He shaved his eyebrows. Those are permanent tattoo. Uh, that's, that, that is, those aren't his eyebrows. Yeah. What? I don't know. So this dude, deep throats, Chicken legs. <laughs> and ha I don't think I have ever seen a dude with the brows like that. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a dude with a dude with tattooed brows. Ever. Well, man, I just want to say real quick, uh, I'll never forget watching that. <laughs> I, I've been waiting to show you that for a week. Dude, I hate the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, ah, come on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I took a break for a little bit for the mukbang ones, but I had to pull that one out because I could not fathom how the fuck he sucked that Why chicken. Why are you up. wearing gloves? <laughs> what the fuck? God damn, there's some so gross all the way Ooh. around. Yeah, dude. Hey, this is for you, you hey, dude. Let's get out of here. I don't, I don't Wait, know. Wait, no, I got to show you. I gotta, there's, there's one more thing I got to show you. <sighs> it's not food. It is not food. I promise you it is not food, okay? This next one is something that popped up on my feed. And I could not, for the life of me, also understand why this is a thing. A kid is, uh, there's a dude who's a barber. And his grandfather has okay. passed away. Okay. And he goes to give his grandfather one last haircut in the morgue, in the coffin at the funeral. His grandfather is dead while he's giving him this haircut. He touched him up in the at the funeral. He in gave him a touch up the coffin. He lined him up in the coffin. Why not just do that, dog, at the morgue? Oh, by the way, dude's hair looks pretty good. Bro, why? He's touching him up at the funeral. Yeah. You're giving your dead grandfather. Oh, it doesn't look like he's at the funeral. He's in the coffin, but I think they're at the morgue. This, I bet you this, this was sense. no. I bet you this was the funeral just right before. Yeah, but it's not like there were people there watching this haircut. Except the person filming the dude giving his dead grandfather a haircut. Yeah. No. I. I. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this I understand. I mean, you gotta. You got to make somebody look good if it's going to be open casket. I'm honestly, 
just not in on open casket. Yeah, the two the two open caskets that funerals that I've gone to really fucked me up. Which ones were Nana they? and Grandma Jane? Yeah. Both of those really fucked me up. I'm not that Nana one was like my first yeah. funeral. And she passed the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Over ten years ago, probably. I remember walking into that room, seeing her, and then going and sitting in the hallway for the rest of the yeah. ceremony. Remember that? Yeah. I could not fucking handle myself. I was also like eight. Like, yeah, it fucked with me so hard. Same with Grandma Jane. I was like one of the last people to go up to the, to her. Yeah. Because it was, I was having straight flashbacks, PTSD of Nana. But I could not go up. Do you know what I mean? I remember going up with mom and it was just like rough. It fucked me up. You know what? You know what? What open casket, if there was one, would have probably sent me over the edge? Hmm. Jack. Oh, without a doubt. Dog, I would have never left that fucking church. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I would have gone and just gotten in the ground with him. Like, I would have, I, that would have fucked me up forever. Here, I want you to hear me at my funeral. There's no tears. What a great life I've had. And, and no well, matter when it ends. What a great fucking life I've had. And I want there to be music and I want people telling stories and I want laughs and yo, dude. I, I got you on that 100%, but you can't tell me no tears. It's not possible. Well, you, I, I get that. Like uh, you can't, you can't tell me not to, like not to mourn. Open you know casket, I mean? but only waist down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm going to go a completely different Open casket, waist down, open casket. Just legs. So if you want to say goodbye, you know, say goodbye. <laughs> on that note, thank you guys for joining on the podcast. We appreciate you. That was too weird for me to even have a comment back for. So I'm just going to hit us with an outro. The oh, fuck? Um, uh, Comedianjoshua.com for tour dates and tickets. Uh, by the time this comes out, like he said, we'll be in Alberta, Canada. Hey, Canada, it's fucking April. Why is it snowing? By the way, Calgary. Keeps, Cal Calgary, Calgary, Alberta. Alberta. That's yeah, like, but it's like saying, I'm going to be in Texas. You got to give them where yeah, we're yeah. going to be. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. So we will be in Calgary. Uh, by the way, again, Calgary, warm the fuck up. I don't know what's going on with you guys, but uh, we'll be there this weekend by the time this comes out. Thank you guys always for listening. I'm bringing my fur coat. Oh, me too. Fucking A. We match it? Yeah, I'm going. You want me to go black fur coat? I was going to go wolf. I was going to go wolf fur coat with the hood. Wolf fur coat? I got a wolf fur coat with the hood. Like it's a gray, it's a gray wolf. and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna fire. Yeah. Well, I'll have a black one. Uh, uh, but thank you guys for tuning in. Um, Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Um, if you haven't, go check out that Bunny podcast. It uh, our interview with Bunny XO. It is outstanding. It was so much fun. Um, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Thank you to the oldies. Thank you to the newbies. And thank you to those who come join us in the future. We really appreciate you guys. None of this would be possible without you, Josh Wolf. Yo, one last thing. New York, thank you so much for this weekend at the Gramercy Theater. Always wanted to play there. I want you all to know, if I'm coming to your city, it's a good fucking time. The show right now is a good fucking time. If you like to have fun, come to the show. If you don't like to have fun, don't come to the show. Because yeah. that is not the place for you. Nope. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. I am so grateful for all of you and so grateful for this amazing life and to be able to spend this time with you, Jacob Wolf. I, I say it every week, best time of my life. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. More great shit to come. We love you. May 9th. Wait, hold on. We're not done yet. Oh. May 9th. Netflix is a joke. Hey, do, someone ni do something nice for somebody today. Tell somebody you love them. Love you guys. I'll hey. see you next week. <laughs>